All right, all right, all right, friends, back with our mini-series on the Saga at Coatco. This is our 100% reactive maintenance plant. This is part five of five of mini-series. We're going to conclude here, folks. Uh, it's a metal, Coatco is a metal sheet coating plant where I'm the new maintenance manager. And you got to watch this mini-series in order. This is not going to make any sense if you don't. Uh, where we're at, we completed our A3 process, okay? Today, we're going to discuss a couple more facets of uh, the change. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the culture change, and I got some reflections and next steps I'm going to cover. So let's get right into it. This is Joe Kuhn of Lean Driven Reliability, bridging the gap between best practices that you should, that you know you should be doing, but you can't quite figure out how. And this five-part mini-series is going from zero to hero, okay? Uh, ADCAR model, it's a model by Jeff uh, Hyatt, I guess that's how you say his name. Um, ADCAR is an acronym. He, he lists them as five goals or steps for a successful change. I'm not going to go into all these, just one of them that I want to highlight. So ADCAR stands for Awareness, Desire, Knowledge, Ability, and Reinforcement. Awareness, boy, we got there through uh, bi the business case and uh, observation. Desire, you know, was the, the culture. If people didn't want to live in the culture that we had, we knew we needed to change, weren't getting the results. Knowledge, having new knowledge around how to do things differently, um, you know, uh, uh, like how to communicate differently was a big part of our change. How to communicate person to person, shift to shift. Uh, and then we've got that ability and skill training. Today we're going to talk about reinforcement, big part of a change process that often gets uh, um, you know skipped. I mean, we're moving on to the next thing, but reinforcement's big deal. Here are some I ideas how you can reinforce the change. Hey, folks, have a celebration meal when you hit uh, milestones. People love meals. Um, it could be pizza. It can be a steak dinner. I've had uh, my leadership team cook a steak dinner. For everybody, baked potatoes, green beans, right there. On, we had some grills we rented. It was a great experience. Um, you know, example, say when you get down to uh, 10 hours of unplanned maintenance downtime in one week, down from, I believe it was 21 before we started. You know, buy shirts commemorating the changes. You know, print something like Coat Co. Together Driving for Excellence, something like that. Uh, and that's a reoccurring uh, reminder of the accomplishment. Buy gift cards for all the employees and take their spouse out to dinner. This very positive response from these in, in the past. It's a $75 gift card, you know, where they have to share the experience and explain the experience with some pride to their significant other. Uh, another one that's big, personal handwritten notes from the plant manager on who took a, uh, an important or key role here. Just handwritten note, mail it to their house. Don't give it to them, mail it to their house. Uh, there are some successory cards that you can buy to have some leadership or some you know positive outlook sayings on them that the plant manager can say, hey, you know, hey, we did this, you were involved here, here's what it meant. I wanted to thank personally thank you for that. It's got to be handwritten, not a form letter, okay? So that's the ad card model reinforcement of change. Let's go on to uh, next steps. Next steps. Uh, the actions above, you know, will not be perfect. Don't expect them to be perfect. You're going to need to adjust. Ensure that you adjust with the new information that includes new observations. So if somebody wants you to change something, again, take that as input. Go and see, right? That's, that's a skill you're learning here. Uh, in 6 to 12 months, you're going to need to create a new A3. Uh, when? When you feel that the changes from the last A3 have stabilized into the new normal, okay, you got to work through the culture change. Now, you're never going to get perfect, but when you're 95% there and it's the new normal, uh, then it's time to go out and say, where's our new waste at? It's going to be there. This uh, A3 process is repeated indefinitely. It's the tool that you are going to use to organize your change and make sure that you follow all the steps um, now that you have a new found, uh, foundation, a culture of credibility, you know, what can take us to the next, next level? So what's next? You know, maybe it's enhanced training on planning. You know, there's a lot of companies that provide that. I think it's great. I'd highly recommend it, but not as a start. 
uh, PDM or problem solving, enhanced training on those. Maybe it's technology. Put continuous uh, condition monitoring out there or artificial intelligence on some critical assets. Create a loop room. What are some others? Apply this technology after you've gotten credibility. Ask for these things after you already have saved a million or two million dollars. Once you have credibility and, and of using the resources you have to a, a much higher efficiency than where we started uh, just a few weeks ago. Okay, reflection. You know, what have I done? You know, folks, this is culture change. We created new experiences for people to move them from powerless to powerful. Agree? I think you do. Um, uh, we got meaningful results in just weeks. Very limited upfront spending. Very limited. There was no bow wave of spending. Traditional maintenance and reliability books will talk about or creating a reliability culture and they'll talk about a bow wave of spending. That means heavy upfront cost, getting, you know, in training, hiring a consultant, and um, getting the assets in maintainable shape and fixing a lot of things that are broken. And you got uh, just huge ups, uh, uh, upfront uh, influx of cost uh, that you get got to work through. This is the way most plants work through 20 years ago. Uh, number four, observation is the key to unlocking hidden waste. Hopefully you're reflecting on that. Empowerment. You know, we've increased hope. Everyone wants to be part of a success and they feel that, they, that, that we now at CodeCo have a process for everybody to bring their full self and their full skills to the table. We have a manufacturing system, you know, that enables people to bring their full talents. I just said that. Uh, plus, look at the new skills and new pay for maintenance and production. Proud to work there. Emergency crew, you know, they may be stuck on afternoons and midnight shift, but they can see that most of the uh, uh, positions in maintenance are actually on days and they're enhanced positions with more income. So that's something that uh, for people to look forward to and strive for. Happier employees, lower attrition, lower injuries. A lot of positive things going on. You know, if we went... Imagine if we went with our first impressions. Remember, five videos ago, we talked about hiring an engineering firm to create PMs and then hire more people to do the work on weekends. You know, hire an outside firm to do our PDM and uh, get some discipline into our cost controls. That was our gut reaction after our business case meeting. How do you think these would have been accepted in our current culture? You know, pretty poor. You know, uh, you know, we had a poor foundation and then we pour, we throw money at it. Uh, there are a lot of things inside of current state that would prevent these actions from being successful. You know, is there any doubt that the actions that we've taken from our current state are better uh, by all measures? Cost, cost implement, delayed results. I mean, we get the results uh, so much faster and chance of failure. You know, most people that deploy a reliability uh, plan, they actually fail because it takes so long. The number one reason, loss of sponsorship. So you, you have this huge upfront cost, and then finally the plant manager gets tired of the spending. They put it on hold. They put it on pause because they, they can't do the investment. They agree with the things that need to be done, but they can't stand a three-year timeline. We just conquered all that. Plus... We would not have addressed doing the old old methods, traditional methods, and what most people will tell you to do. We would not have addressed the waste that we saw in current state. Remember all the communication issues between people, between crews, between maintenance and production. All the connections between one mechanic and the operator. All those connection issues. We would, we would not have addressed those. There's no best practices in, in maintenance and reliability that address those. But it was fundamental to our culture uh, to preventing us from being able to accept new best practices. Look at what about work leveling? We had people on afternoon shift that were real busy and people that weren't doing anything at all for several hours of the day. And then next day it, 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 uh, it swapped. Sorry about this. I got to learn how to turn that off. So work leveling was a big issue. Also, what about TPM? Bringing operations into reliability. That would have been years down the road in most uh, traditional reliability deployments. And we brought those up front because they're simple, they're free, and impactful. Number eight, how do you think the plant manager is going to respond to my new proposal here and why? Very limited upfront cost. 
no downside risk. What's the downside risk of what we're doing? You know, front end loaded uh, returns. So the investments, you, we're going to start to get re results that we can see in just weeks, in weeks. Uh, hopefully you can see that. And high uh, confidence in the cultural acceptance of change. We've established a go and see and a culture of listening and using other people's skills, a culture of improvement. We've got that foundation set. So when new technology comes in, maybe it's it's new new vendor support comes in, we've already got the culture to accept that. You know, um, uh, master the A3, this is a career advice, master the A3 and especially the current state piece of going and seeing on the floor chalk circle and you'll prepare, propel your career, no doubt. This is my advice to you as an individual. Just make this a core competency, the A3 and the current state, especially that's what people leave off the observation. Okay, uh, kind of in summary here, an eye for waste and a waste focus in your plant is the secret sauce, folks. It's the secret sauce to making a, a, a significant change in the reliability of your uh, plant. Every single reliability tool is designed to eliminate waste. It makes no sense, no sense to me to apply the tools without knowing your unique waste at your plant. So, you know, if somebody's trying to sell you a tool and you, you know, they're trying to sell you a hammer and you don't know if you got any nails, you know, it's a pretty looking hammer, but you don't need it. Find out what tools you need from, from uh, knowing the waste in your plant. Okay, feedback. Will this work at your plant? Let me know in the comments. Hey folks, this is the end of this series for Code Co. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please give me your uh, comments if you like this content, you like this format of a mini series and you know, looking at the text instead of looking at my forehead. Hey folks, begin your journey. This stuff isn't that hard. You, dis you may need some pointers from a person like me, an experienced guy that's been there before. Uh, send me an email, I can help you out. Uh, I'll have a phone call with you, email exchange. I do that all for free. Hopefully a couple of you will want to reach out to me for an experienced guide so I can shave years off your deployment using this technique. Hit smash like and subscribe. Thank you.